Hey everyone, welcome to Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. We're so excited. This is episode one, and we will be painting the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Young Copper Dragon by WizKids. Um, this will be a weekly tutorial. Um, we'll do, be doing it Sundays, uh, every Sunday from 5 to 7 Eastern and 2 to 4 Pacific. Uh, and we're going to dive right in. Uh, we only have two hours, so we're going to try our best to fit within those two hours. Uh, please be active in the chat. We will be listening uh, to you guys if you guys have any questions as we go. And we're going to go step by step and use Vallejo Paints to paint this awesome WizKids Copper Dragon. And we're going to dig right in. Make sure that you follow us here. We're also going to have a VOD version that will go on Twitch as well as on YouTube later. But we are only live exclusively on Twitch currently on the D&D Twitch and Realmsmith as well um, at home. All right, let's dig right in here. So tools of the trade. First off, of course, you're going to need the Young Copper Dragon Miniature by WizKids. Um, some brushes. We have the Vallejo brushes for miniatures here, but you'll need a detail brush, uh, some sort of base coat brush, as well as a, a dry brush of some sort as well. Um, some water, of course, some paper towel, and a paint palette. The paints we'll be using today are uh, Vallejo Bone White, Off White, and Black, as well as a, a Vertigris, which is actually an effect paint. Uh, we use the sepia wash and a heavy blue-gray, black wash, livery green, rosy flesh, hammered copper, bright bronze, and polished gold for the skin and scales. All right, so we're going to dive right in here. Um, here is the awesome Copper Dragon Mini from WizKids. Really super excited about it. Um, we're going to start off with hammered copper. And as you can see here, we have a bottle of hammered copper. We're going to put a little bit on our palette. And to do this, we're going to use a fairly sizable brush. Um, I've got a, a large brush here that we're going to use to do the base coat. And basically what we want to do, and this is going to take a little while, we're going to cover the entire miniature in hammered copper to start. And it's going to take quite a bit of paint to do this. And as we do this, like I said, if you're active in the chat, you got any questions as we go, um, when it comes to a base coat, uh, it's important to remember we don't want to be super, super thick with it. We don't want to clog the details, but we do want to make sure that um, we get solid coverage. And you can see here, um, the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures, the WizKid stuff, is actually quite, it covers very, very, very well um, and very thick. And as you can see, we're getting really solid coverage on that currently. Uh, I did not put even close to enough hammered copper into my palette here. If you're painting along as well, we're going to be bringing up the paint names um, for each color that we're using onto the screen as we as we go. Um, Joel is currently producing for us um, over on the side here, so he will be answering your questions as we as we proceed here. We're really excited. We're, we're we've decided that for the first four weeks. Uh, to launch this series, we're going to be painting all of the young dragons from WizKids. And so we'll be starting with the Copper Dragon. Next week, we're probably going to be doing the Black Dragon, I think is the plan. Uh, and then after that, uh, we'll go on from there. There's a Blue Dragon and a Green Dragon as well. Maybe we'll do a poll on our Facebook in order to um, find out what you guys want to see next. Uh, I am using a little bit of water to dilute uh, the paint just slightly. Uh, I do that just to make sure that it flows um, a little bit better. Um, typically for base coats, I like to use the Vallejo Heavy uh, Extra Opaque uh, paints. Um, today I am not doing that uh, just because they don't have heavy opaques in the metallics and we want to get right down to business um, with our base coat. Add some more amber copper. We're going to just we're gonna go through a lot of it. Already have questions. Let's, let's have them. Base coating takes the longest, especially on these large minis. So let's let's hear what people have to say. Big Puppy Stewart says, "What compound gives the shimmer effect?" What compound gives a shimmer effect? And, um, and she asks, because, yeah. or he asks, because I have a friend who paints minis. Yeah. But she reacts badly to the to some of the aluminum shimmers. Oh, geez. Well, that is well beyond my pay grade. Uh, when it comes to uh, Vallejo. That is a great question to ask Vallejo directly. They're very responsive on the social media. I actually don't know. Um, that is a wonderful question that I will make sure to ask Alex Vallejo next time we see him. Maybe we'll have an answer for you guys uh, next week. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they're very, very responsive on their social media. So I would go ahead and, uh, and post on there, and that should give you uh, a, d a decent 
quick answer. Wolf he asks, so why do you do this? I mean, I think they're they're talking about why do you paint? Why do I paint? Um, I still I can kind of tell you why I started painting. Uh, I actually started painting years ago. Um, when I got into Lord of the Rings miniatures, the, the, the GW miniatures, um, and just started painting those because I liked the movies. I didn't even play the game much. Got into Warhammer and then uh, deep got deep back into D&D. &D, um, and then that kind of married my love for miniature painting and uh, pin, uh, painting war game minis um, and, and my love of Dungeons and & Dragons. And that was just an awesome opportunity for me to kind of do both um, kind of at the same time. So we're very, very, very uh, excited and thankful for, um, and, and I mean, these Nozers minis are so great because you can paint them directly out of, I remember, you know, rattle cans and having to prime minis um, before having to paint them. And, and these days, a lot of minis come pre-primed. Um, all the WizKids pre, uh, pre, uh, unpainted minis come pre-primed um, with Vallejo uh, primer. So uh, you can just go ahead and paint right out of the box. I literally just opened the blister um, kind of, you know, half an hour before we went live here and I'm already putting paint on and as you can see the coverage is really good on this it's really really solid Sebastian Fire asks do you have any milk do I have any milk uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so either that is a Game of Thrones um, question <laughs> reference which I'm assuming uh, that is what it is or Vor from our live stream loves milk too mm. so um, is he asking because he wants us to paint with milk <laughs> Um, is that, because that, that is a, that is a, um, <laughs> that is a technique I have not used. Um, I'd love to hear if that's a technique that people use. You know, I opened up the, the monster's manual here to, um, show the copper dragon while I'm painting it, but I'm totally spraying it full of copper paint, which, I mean, is okay. Um, it adds character, I guess, to, your book. to my book, but anyways, maybe I'll <laughs> move it over to the side of it. Oh, that's funny. So it is Brandon. Uh, oh, <laughs> was that Brandon asking? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Brandon plays Vor on our live streams. Uh, you guys can catch our live streams on Mondays at 7.30. We play 5th edition D&D. &D. Um, one of our uh, streams is uh, is moving into homebrew, um, but the other one is Storm King's Thunder. So check that out. Gooey Mondays. Green says, so I really have a color block when I paint zombies. I use a grayish skin tone, but I think it's not, a, it's not good. Do you have any palette for zombies? Zombies. That's a great question. Um, I painted, so I had like, I was playing through Storm King's Thunder, and uh, my Storm King's Thunder campaign, uh, obviously, uh, I think it was one of the Barbarian Mounds. I can't remember which one it was uh, off, off the top of my head. Anyways, I painted like 30 zombies in a day. Um, and I basically just mixed it up. So I did some like white walker colors, uh, some blue skin, some green, green skin, of course, kind of like classic zombies. I did some pale skin, some actual skin. So I, I actually mix it up quite a bit. Um, and then the thing for me though is pale. So you always want to kind of, whatever, whatever you're using, um, you want to kind of make, uh, allow the, the highlight to kind of be a pale color, um, over and above on top of it. Uh, you want that dead skin look, uh, for sure. But I, for me, zombies... There isn't a kind of tried and true way. It really depends on how they became zombies, and I like to kind of dig in to exactly what it means um, and uh, and where they exact where they came from um, from a story perspective. Uh, this is getting hard to to, to hold now because I'm running out of space. We're almost on our base coat. Um, milk makes a great base coat, says Ken Hyper. Perfect oh. for minis when you need that bleh smell. Adds to the immersion. Oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's great once you've once they go sour. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure at that point it's really great. Uh, Geek House Live says, "Hey, tell Jason this is Rick from Game Trade Media." Hey, what's up, Rick? That is Rick. You can catch him on painting Happy Little Minis with our buddy Dave Taylor, um, and they do a lot of really awesome stuff. You guys just painted. What did you guys just paint? You guys just did a show, and you painted Wiz Kids something or others. I think they were just like uh, adventurer minis, I believe. Oh, Rick's a good man, good buddy of ours. Um, I will tell you guys before we get more questions that we will be at Origins. Uh, Joel and myself from Realmsmith, as well as Ryan, who produces for us 
on Realmsmith will be at Origins, and we will actually be holding um, painting tutorial classes, like master classes, um, featuring WizKids D and D minis, uh, Nolzer's minis, and uh, Vallejo paints, uh, and that will be. Um, oh, the dates. I don't have the dates. Joel, can you bring up the dates for we'll Origins? Dates. It's in June. I know that for sure. Um, I know that for sure. I'm just not sure exactly what date it is in June. Next time we need more light here, Joel, for me. Yeah, I totally agree with you. For you. For me. Yeah, June 12th to 16th. Origins 2019. June, June 12th to 16th. Okay. I think we'll be doing two or three a day. I think the events were already posted uh, for Origins. So if you guys are going to Origins and you want to join us um, and you want to paint some minis with us, basically the way Origins works is I think they have like a like a chit system, almost like a, like a token system, and you pay a certain amount of tokens uh, when you um, register for the event. So Rick says they just painted some Wave 8 minis. Nice. And then... These are Wave 8s, yeah. Fairgoss says... Are you sticking with one brand of paint, or do you mix between brands for the right color? Right. And um, wisely. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> Since this is a Vallejo-sponsored <laughs> stream, I'm going to say that the, the official answer, actually, f frankly, um, I used to use other brands, um, which I won't speak of, uh, and, uh, and I've actually exclusively gone to Vallejo, and not just because we're sponsored, but, but actually because I just find that their paint is, is great. Um, and personally, as a painter, I really appreciate kind of their range and uh, and and all that they have. And and I've just found that that I don't really need to go anywhere else. I haven't been, had to go anywhere else yet for for, for any other paint. Um, but that is my personal process. All right, base coat is done, folks. That was quick with this big brush I have here. We're gonna let that just set for just a second. Uh, does anybody else who's listening have the Copper Dragon? Uh, and have they started painting it? Dark Mr. Mall said, just painted this last week. Nice. Dragons in this set. Nice. I'd love to know what, what colors they used in order to do that. Uh, if there's anything specific, if they went, um, or even paint ranges. I'd love to hear that. Wolfie asks if you can do his as well. Yes. Yeah, just send it over. If it gets here in the next uh, hour and a half, <laughs> then I will absolutely paint that one too. <laughs> all right. He's looking all right. I'm not sure the coverage is great because <laughs> our lighting here, we need to we need to work on our lighting a little bit, Joel. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it looks great on ca it looks good on camera, but it really does. For for my purposes, it's a little it's a little dark. To see detail here. All right. Um, now that we've done the copper base coat, um, I am going to test. So basically what I've done is I've pulled a bunch of paints that I think that we'll need and we'll use. Um, kind of a guess and a range. Uh, and then we're going to test a couple different things. I'm going to try a sepia wash. Uh, the washes from Vallejo are really, really great. Um, basically what washes do is they, they create shadow. We call it talent in a bottle um, or liquid liquid talent um, and we are going to put some in our palette we're going to add a little bit of water to it just to lighten it up a bit and we're going to paint it right onto our mini now this should be fairly dry on this wing so we're going to paint along and it should go into the recesses and create shadow just like that uh, we don't want it to pull too much because we don't want it to obscure detail um, but we're going to basically place it on the mini and then move it along the mini um, like so, and it will add, and then the drying process for this is a little long, so we want to make sure that we get this fairly soon. And the, the hammered copper isn't quite dry yet. Kit and Vale mm. says, I just joined in. Are those figures pre-primed? They are. So all uh, WizKids, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures are pre-primed gray, um, and I paint them right out of the box. Um, and then I just finished them with some sort of lacquer coat. Um, yeah. Uh, Vallejo has a really great matte varnish. You know what? Before I do this sepia wash, which I already started, I'm actually going to go to bleached bone um, to, to do kind of the scales along its belly and under its neck um, because the we're going to need a little bit more drying time on the, um, on the wings there. 
uh, not Bleach Bone, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a competitor's Bone White. <laughs> I used that other uh, company who <laughs> will remain nameless for a long time. And now we're going to use Bone White, which is more or less the same color as Bleach Bone. Really. <laughs> From the other company. I love you, Alex. Um, we love your paint. Okay. Um, Are you going to do a patina on the wings, says Ha, ah, yes, I am. Was that Rick Hankney? Um, yeah, Rick, we are absolutely, I have uh, Vertigris, which is a game effect from Vallejo, and we're going to add a little bit of a, of a copper patina for sure. All right, so with Bleach Bone, all we're going to do is we're going to go fairly thick on it, uh, and we are going to paint each scale along its torso. Um, so this kind of singling the center kind of large ones out. Um, and moving our way along down the miniature the whole way here. I had a little tiny bit of water. We don't want too much because we're covering a darker um, copper tone with a bone white. Did I say bleach bone again? Oh, okay. Here we go. Is this the bone white still? Yes, which is mixing with the copper because I'm trying to rush through this. This is the most manly pose you'll see me do on the stream. There's nothing manlier than blowing on your toy copper dragon. Oh dear. It's a Sunday. Okay. Um, here we go. All right. Um, for those of you that don't know, so Vallejo has been around f since the 50s, I believe. 50s or 60s? I think it's 60s. 60s? Um, and it was started by Alex Vallejo's father. Um, and they were actually in New Jersey is where Vallejo paint started. Uh, and then they moved to Spain, which was probably a... I mean, I love New Jersey. Don't get me wrong. Um, but New Jersey is a lot like Toronto, which is where we're from in uh, the Great White North. Um, and, uh, and so then they moved the company to Spain, um, but it's a family company and it's still run like a family company, which is great. All of their paints are manufactured in Spain. Um, and, uh, and they have great product and they're just really cool people. Alex, <laughs> I always do this and I can't believe I'm doing this on the internet now, um, because he has a good laugh when we do this at shows, but whenever Alex goes to a show, here it is again. Uh, whenever we go to shows, Alex likes to, um, he judges which shows he goes to, trade shows he goes to by the quality of the steak in the city <laughs> that he's going to and the quality of the shopping <laughs> because his family gives him a long shopping list of things that he needs to buy in the States when he comes. So, but he's a really good guy. Keep those questions coming, folks. Yeah, this copper isn't dry yet. We, um, actually, you know what? We'll even take a poll here while people are watching. Um, if you guys want us to paint, so we have, after the copper dragon, we'll have the black dragon, the blue, and the green. So of black, blue, and green, which one would you guys like us to paint next week? next Sunday. Please sound off in the comments. And we will try our best to oblige. And then Joel has to count all of them as you guys comment. Green, blue, black, blue, blue. There's lots. There's lots? <laughs> you try? Green, blue, black, blue? Blue is, is winning. Right? Blue is winning. All right, folks, keep letting me know, because... Will you be doing a show for each dragon? We'll yes. See what you guys do. Yes, we will. Absolutely. Um, we've already started some tutorial series uh, um, on our YouTube page, so you can go to youtube.com slash um, realmsmith, and we did a four-part Beholder tutorial series um, where we showed... Er uh, we. we, we where we demonstrated how to paint the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures um, Beholder 
uh, and that was fun. And we did some really cool effects, and and even in part four, we did some um, OSL, uh, some object source lighting, which is kind of like secondary lighting effects, uh, as if kind of like it is on the uh, center of or in the front of the uh, players, uh, sorry, the monsters manual, um, and we had it like. We had the fire coming from one side and the lightning color coming from the other side. Um, and so that is currently uh, on our YouTube page. And you can check that out. That is a four-part series. And then we also have a two-part Owlbear series, which I know for those of you that are still waiting for part two, it's coming, I swear. Um, but these will be weekly two-hour tutorials. And we'll be doing uh, the first four, like I said, will be the dragons because they're awesome and we wanted to make sure that we launched with these and then the uh, the following ones will be we'll be looking at probably wave eight minis we like doing these really big ones too um, though they're a challenge to do in four hours anyway so what you can see here is I've done the whole belly bone white from the neck all the way to the end of the tail uh, as well as base coated the hammered copper already now the sepia wash isn't really showing up great. I may have to go to black, um, but we will we will see. I'm also seeing some spots. The best part about painting big minis with bad light is <laughs> that when you rotate the mini, you see little spots like this that I missed uh, in the nooks and crannies of this of this dragon. So um, I'm also noticing that our uh, our overcam here is a little jumpy. So guys, apologize for that. I don't know if it is live. Or if it's just on here, but uh, we're still working out some of our some of our tech stuff. So I think that is the only part of the copper dragon that I will be doing. Um, bone white is kind of the the center, um, and then we're going to do the claws and stuff in black. But um, that is that. We're also going to go in and do the the teeth bone white as well, but uh, we'll do that a little later. The wash is the longest process, so we're going to go to a wash um, to add some. I'm going to go to black wash instead of the sepia. We will use the sepia on the bone white, though. Um, that is, it really helps to, to kind of bring out the, the detail on there. Give the black wash a shake. Once again, this is the black wash here from Vallejo. Will these tutorials include minis from the crates? Oh, that is a good question. Um, speaking of the crates, um, we have a monthly adventure crate that we ship to a number of subscribers across the world, uh, <laughs> North America and Europe, and, um, and yeah, we probably will. I mean, we want to focus on kind of new releases, and our crates are very targeted and curated for, for specific, um, the, the specific modules that we write for our crates, but, but absolutely, um, there, there definitely will be some crossover. Uh, we also do um, tutorials on our, um, we have an exclusive group for our, our subscribers uh, called Members of the Realm, uh, and they, uh, and there you can also catch some of that stuff as well. Uh, we do some private tutorials and things as well. So as you can see, I've used the black, which is a lot thicker, uh, or a lot darker, I should say, uh, and not as subtle, but we want to get some really great um, definition in here. So I'm just going to kind of pull again I'm letting it pull and then I'm pulling it across the mini so that it rests in the recesses but does not clog the detail because we want to make sure we don't do that yeah do you want to bring it out a bit there we go Hopefully that's better, folks. Looks better. Good. There are going to be some some technical stuff that we will be improving, obviously, over the weeks as we go. Is the other belly going to be dry brushed to give it some copper hints, or is it is it going to le be left white? No. So I I will start bone white, and then we'll use a sepia wash on that to uh, kind of give it some definition, and then I, I am going to dry brush it after that with uh, bone white again and then some off white as well to bring up the, the, the edges of it. Um, we do have some, you know, we will be doing some kind of advanced techniques as we go through the weeks. Um, within two hours to paint a, a copper dragon in two hours is, is fairly, fairly not challenging, but we just have to manage our time. So we're, 
kind of doing the quick and dirty, kind of tabletop ready um, approach for this. Now the black looks pretty intense now, but once we've once the black has dried, then we're, we'll go over it with um, we'll dry brush it again um, with bright bronze, and that will that will subdue the uh, the black wash quite a bit. What colors are you planning to use for the textures at the end? It says dark Mr. Mall. Um, which texture specifically? So um, I'll be using all kind of shades of gold and, and copper and bronze for uh, the textures um, on the scales and skin. Um, on the scales along the belly, I'll be using various shades of white uh, or cream, I should say, um, in order to kind of bring out those details. And then... Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, this mini um, doesn't have a lot of um, depth, I guess, when it comes to uh, color choices. Uh, even if you look at the player's handbook or anywhere online, copper dragons tend to be um, fairly um, simplistic in their in their color scheme. So it's just a, you know the the key is to make that interesting in and of itself. Do you know the name of the events you're doing at Origins? Um, this should be under Vallejo. It should be a Vallejo event. Um, That's Mischief Joker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know offhand. Um, we will be posting those on our Facebook page and links to that. Um, we just haven't had a chance to do that yet as we kind of approach. Oh, also, uh, one thing to say about those... Um, events is that we will also be featuring uh, guests who will be painting with us. Uh, last year we had Holly Conrad um, and Satine Phoenix and Rudy Rutenberg and Rick Ankney from Game Trade, um, Vanessa Muse from The Crafting Muse, and a number of others who joined us to help us paint um, in each of those sessions. So those will be announced as well. We'll be announcing all of the special guests that we'll have um, joining us as well. So stay tuned for that. Ken Hyper has hosted us on his channel now. What? Thanks, yeah. Ken. Ken is hosting us as well? Yeah. So cool. Yeah, we're really excited um, to partner with D&D &D and WizKids and Vallejo on this. Um, it's an honor to, to be on the D&D Twitch and host it on there. Um, we've, uh, we've long dreamed of Ken. being here, and here we are. Ken says, shared this on my FB, Realmsmith deserves all the love. Aw, thanks, <laughs> guys. Who's that? Ken Hyper. Ken Hyper. Thanks, Ken Hyper. Thank you so much. All right. Quick and dirty, folks. Quick and dirty. Here it is. So that black wash has now been applied across the entire mini. And I think it's looking good. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, as I go, I'm noticing spots that I missed. But that's okay. And I'm sure I'll continue to look and find spots moving forward. So we're going to put that down just for a sec. And we're just going to talk. Because that is going to take... These washes always take a little while to dry. How are we doing for time, Joel? It is currently 5.29. 5.30? Half an hour, and we're already about a quarter of the way off. A third of the way there? That's great. Yep. It's great. So who won in the... Uh, Looks like blue. Blue, eh? Yeah, blue by Blue's next? I thought black was going to win. Yeah. Wow. It didn't. That's great. It did not. It did not. Um, do a lot of people... Have a lot of people picked up the dragons from... Uh, from whiz kids like already number. let's ask though um yeah just it, it looks like a bunch have picked it up dark mr mall says you legit gave me my idea for my darth mall custom beholder nice <laughs> <laughs> actually why this is drying do we want to just grab the beholder there and sure just on the top of the shelf there. 
This is also the studio that we run our live streams in. <laughs> I'm at my DM spot <laughs> currently. Just up there. Yeah, there it is. So this is the beholder that we did for the series. Um, you can see uh, it was a lot of fun. But we uh, did like an object source lighting of kind of a torch kind of approach. Like this, what? They're buddies. Um, and then we did kind of the lightning, uh, kind of blue lighting on the back of it. Uh, and then we also used glue gun to create the slobber on the teeth there. And all the fun little eyes. This was a fun one. Four part series. Check that out on our YouTube channel. People are asking if this will be a VOD later. Like yes, VOD yes, it will. Absolutely. Yeah. I know that a lot of you, you know, just jumping in on a Sunday. I don't have the paints necessarily and all that kind of stuff, so. Fairgoss says he got them all yesterday. All the dragons? Yeah, and Dark, Dark Mr. Moss says two of each. Wow. Yeah. Um, there's a question here. Are, have you done the adult red dragon? I'm new to this stream. I have not yet. This is the first show. Yeah. That's great. No, we have not done. That's a, that's a Pathfinder mini, I believe. Um, but yeah, we have not done that one yet. Geekhouse Live said, I thought you used the slobber I sent you, I guess, for the tooth. The, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, we, uh, don't, we don't accept, just for those who are watching, <laughs> we don't accept slobber uh, in the form of mailing or gifts. Um, I think we have pretty much kind of our own um, that we can use. Well, like, people can see me drinking out of my horn there. Dewey Green says, when Vallejo comes to VR. I think he means Brazil. I could be wrong. Um, where is BR? Yeah, if we can yeah. clarify that, that'd be Dewey great. Green, where is BR? If you take requests, I'd love to see you paint a Tarrasque, says Brandon. Yeah, well, when 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 WizKids makes a Tarrasque, which I'm sure that'll happen, I'll talk to Justin about that. Like Justin Yo, people are requesting a Tarrasque. That's Brandon. That's our Brandon, isn't it? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. No. Well, there isn't a Tarrasque mini yet, but if there is, and there will be, uh, we will paint it. It may not be a two-hour paint thing, or maybe I might just dunk it in like a bucket of paint because it's probably going to be like massive. Um, all right. So the, the bone white is dry, um, and so while the black wash is drying, we're going to go ahead and use sepia wash again. This is the sepia shade from Vallejo. Uh, we are going to use that to add some depth to the stomach and neck area and tail of this mini. Are we getting that uh, that that kind of slowdown on the overcam too, yeah. Joel? Online? I think it's the overcam online too. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will get better, folks. I promise. This is episode one. And as you folks can see, as I paint this sepia wash, it's fairly thick, which is okay. I water down just a touch, and um, I am painting it all along, letting it pool into the recesses. And then when we dry brush that, it's going to look sweet. Zemfire says, cute boy. Who's a cute boy? Uh, you, I get, you're the, the only one on the show. I, th I, think, I, think, I think they're talking about the, the copper dragon. Oh. I think that's what they're... Sure. I think that's what they're okay. referring to. Uh, um. And then, <laughs> then my friends are trying to convince me to sculpt them a Tarrasque, and I don't want to tell them. Oh, sorry, I don't want to. So tell them to hurry and make one so I don't have. To. Okay, yeah. got it. What do you, what would you what would you sculpt a Tarrasque out of? What would you use for that? That that's that's that'd be great. In fact, I, I'm going to put my order in. Can you sculpt this one? All right. Almost done here. Oh, mashed okay. potatoes. He sculpted on mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sounds like reduce and reuse, stuff. right? Like, yeah. that's it's it's um good for the environment if you're using mashed potatoes for your terrasc. All right, so as you folks can see, I have added, again, sorry for the darkness, 
Hopefully it's not too dark out there. Um, but I've added a sepia wash to the scales on the front. It looks pretty messy right now. The whole thing is going to look like a hot mess until we really get in there and start to dry brush the surface of that. All right. Let's see here. This is going to take a little bit to dry. Future Trouble says, if you don't mind, hopefully helpful criticism, the color balance of the video seems quite warm. Might be better, more neutral. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you. We'll, we'll take that into consideration. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, folks, if you if you have any comments like that of, of kind of the way that things are appearing and how clear the video is, we are always open to suggestions of how we can improve the experience. So please do not hesitate to provide constructive criticism. I am going to pull out to the bright bronze at this point, and I'm going to start this, this dry brushing process. For those of you that have not dry brushed before, it is fairly simple, um, though easy to kind of mess up. Um, the idea behind dry brushing, we're going to use bright bronze here, and basically what you're doing is you are putting and lo you're loading your brush with a bunch of paint, put a lot in your, in your palette here, and then you are, it's kind of counterintuitive, but then you are wiping most of it off on your paper towel, which seems weird, until almost there's just a residue of paint left on the brush. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go against the grain, not with the grain, because then you get it in the in the recesses. But the idea is that you're just catching the top parts. Look at that already. Just that show uh, the, the the shoulder. But you can see already it's really starting to pop. Is it more that. fun to paint the chromatic dragons rather than the metallic dragons? Oh, that is a great question. Um, is it more fun? Um, I think they're all fun. I think they all have their challenges. Um, I think that the metallic paints are a bit more forgiving um, because they kind of do the work for you. Um, and it doesn't take much, right, to, to just kind of go from copper to bronze to, to gold to get the, the color. Um, whereas with the blue, you're doing, typically sometimes you're doing a lot more, um, mixing or blending uh, with with kind of the colors and to make it look really stunning it, it takes a bit more work um, i think I, in, I i've enjoyed of, of the dragons that i've painted so far i think i've enjoyed the metallics more so because i'm kind of like a lawful good guy so i tend to i tend to veer in that but that is personal bias you can see already that some of that right in here is really starting to pick up nicely. Uh, Big Puppy Stewart says, Man, your skills are way above my level. I'm better at making the minis than I am at painting them. You just plug this out in front of me, and I have to wonder what sorcery you're using. What kind <laughs> of sorcery are you using? I'm not. You know, the funny thing is, is we do, we've done a number of master classes at different um, shows uh, over, the, over the last couple years. Um, and we paint with people of all skill levels. Um, you know, right from literally, this is my first mini I've ever painted, all the way to, you know, I'm a, I'm a master painter. And no word of a lie, it's amazing how similar, if you follow the, the, the same steps, how similar, um, you know, people who have been doing it for a very long time and people who just started, how, how you know, similar the, the minis come out. Because um, it really is, if you learn kind of the steps and the techniques, it's not that difficult. It really is not. I mean, I, you know, you don't have to be a killer artist to be able to paint minis. Um, you know, hopefully we can show you some of those techniques. So literally, I am just dry brushing right across the surface of this, of this dragon. Um, we will work out our lighting issues for next stream. I thought it was good when we started, Joel. I was wrong. So we just crossed a new Twitch threshold of getting 10 people to chat at the same time.
That's good. Yeah. That's great. Oh, it just came up like it just yeah. popped. Like we just, we nice. Just did it. Nice. Um, of, of the people who are watching, um, how, what, um, I would say, what uh, campaign settings are you guys playing in your games right now? That's a that's a great question. I'd love to know the answer to. Sure. And while they're answering that, what is your favorite class of character to play? Oh, so I have a love for paladins and rangers. That those have always kind of been my go-to. Um, currently in our live stream, so tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern Time, um, we'll be playing live on our Twitch and YouTube. Um, and Joel can put a, a link there in the, in the chat. Mm -hmm. And I play a Dragonborn Monk. Um, and I'm enjoying it a lot, actually. Um, I am finding that I'm, uh, you know, being a stoic character sometimes is, is kind of difficult because... Um, you know, you're you're not as kind of, I say entertaining, but like, it's tough to kind of have a contrast or or, or a, a gradient of moods and, and and things that you're able to do. Um, but I'm trying to find my way through it. But I love it. I love I love the monk class. It's it's getting pretty crazy from a from a ability perspective. Dark Mr. Mall says they're playing TOA, so Tomb of Annihilation. Nice. Kyrgos is uh, saying. The one where my players are always too busy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody has that problem. Yeah. The only way we get our guys to, to, to be there is, is we, we guilt them because we have a live stream. Yeah. Otherwise, and still, even still, yeah. some of them never show up. Geek House Live says, writing a homebrew for a certain realm crate. Oh. Uh, and then Mr. Like Joker that. says, doing Tomb of Annihilation at a, at a home game for the DM's setting. Cool. Dark Strider says, can you paint the blue dragon next? Yes. What, yes. Yeah. Yes, we will. Tune in next week. Yep, tune in next week. I think that is the, the popular one, so yeah. we will do the blue dragon for sure. Uh, Ken Hyper says, currently DMing a homebrew built from Lost Mind of Fendelver. Nice. Um, Classic. Dark Strider says, currently DMing a custom setting, making it up as I go along. Lots of homebrew stuff, eh? Yeah. Patreon Media says, greeting my fellow nerds. Hey, game trade! Yeah. So, Big Puppy Stewart says, last official setting I played was old school. Whoa! You yeah. win. Yeah. Dude. Absolutely. I loved Ravenloft. I, know. I still have, s like, scenes in burned in my brain from my um, way to troubled DM. I remember my brother playing, but I remember the books mostly. I read all the yeah. So I wonder if you should have a mic, Joel. I don't know if people can hear you. You think they people can hear? They can't. They can't? They they... The okay. Um, can you guys hear Joel? Let me know if you can hear Joel. Please. Um, Zempire says homebrew dark gothic horror fantasy. Wow. Yeah. That's good stuff. Curse of Strad, Econ Clean seventy two says Curse of Strad. Yep. Geek House Live says, we can hear him. Oh. And then Dark Mall, Dark Mr. Mall says, uh, can hear him. Sebastian says, Joel is quiet. And a lot of people say, I, yeah. anybody say, I don't want to hear him? <laughs> no one has said, I don't want to hear him. Nobody has said, please turn Joel off, because... Um, he is a whisper in the wind, like some <laughs> ASMR stuff going on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> uh... We have mics right here. Like you could just throw that mic on and, and, and turn up the turn up the channel. That would be channel one, two, three, four, right? Turn up channel four. One, two, three, four. Five. Five. Yeah. By four I meant five. Right. Is is what it's just casual folks. We're just painting minis. Like this is what I do on a Sunday. And so we've just asked you guys to kind of join us in this. Uh, it's a lot of fun. What was I about to do? And like a Sunday, I forget exactly. What I, I'm lost without Joel. He leaves the room, and then I totally forget what I was going to do. It's coming along, folks. It's coming along. Check it out. This is the progress on the gold dragon. So far, for those of you that have tuned in later, we did a hammered copper base coat, uh, and then we uh, washed it with a black wash. We did a bone white base coat on the belly 
and the neck and then wash that with sepia tone and now we are dry brushing all of the copper. You can see some of the wash is still wet in the uh, recesses here. But we are dry brushing uh, the hammered copper with bright bronze to try and bring that out a little bit. I was going to grab some more paper towel. That's what I was going to do. Because you can never have enough paper towel when you need it. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hopefully that's better. Can we get a check on Joel and see? I didn't expect, I didn't expect Joel to be talking so much, so... What? We didn't. I don't know how to ask questions if I don't talk so much. Oh, it's true. <laughs> are they? Are we hearing? Are we? I'm not sure. Can people hear me? Yeah, let's find out if you're coming through. Okay. Um. I think you should be here every week, Joel, because me alone here painting um, with everybody else, but it'd be difficult because then I don't have anybody to talk to our fine folks at home. Um, Dark Strider 193 must be from Australia because he says or she says some of the miniatures are very hard to get in Australia. Always. Yeah, that. I've heard that. Yeah, we've had actually a lot of people request our crates in Australia, yeah. and um, when we said, sure, um, we will absolutely uh, deliver to Australia, but it will take like three months <laughs> to get them. Um, people uh, thought maybe that wasn't the best, so we're working on it. We are working on it. Okay, bright bronze is done, I th think. Bright bronze is complete. We are we are done. So folks, you can see we have done the bright bronze on there. You know what? I might redirect. Do we want to redirect this light a little bit? Maybe that one over there? Sure, yeah. I'll if we bring that one. You know what? We can just brighten it all up on a nifty app I have. Yeah, do. Let's do that. I'm just going to bring the lights up, folks. Let us do that. Whoa, brighter. That's better. Ha ha! I'm not sure why I didn't do that before. There we go. That's yeah, better. That's better. Way better. All right. Oh, now I can see what I'm doing. Man, it's not so bad for a blend paint job it's good all right next um uh, we are okay so the sepia tone in, in on the on the scales here on the belly and the neck is still drying so we're gonna let that dry uh, but the rest of the body is fairly dry there's a couple spots that aren't so we're actually gonna go ahead and finish the final dry brush on the body section uh, there that is what we're going to do um, let me see here. Uh, polished gold. It's a great color. We have polished gold here. And I put too much bright bronze on my palette. I got a little overzealous on the bright bronze. Can you talk a little bit about the numbers and the setup for the for the paint colors and stuff on the bottom left there? Yeah, so sure, absolutely. Know. Um, so all the colors that we're using are from the Vallejo game color line. Um, they're kind of their, more of their fantasy line. They've got a model color line that is for uh, kind of World War II um, minis. And the code is their designation. So it's just easier when you're on the website or when you're ordering them from a store to make sure that those are the ones that you, that you, that you want or need. Um, so here I'm being very careful with the polished gold. Um, because I don't want it to look like a gold dragon. It's looking pretty bright on the, on camera there. Um, but what I want to do is I want to just hit the edges, just the edges on the tail, along the back and the spine, on the horns and on the snout, because I do not want it to come across, like I said, to look like a gold dragon, because it runs the risk of doing that. Um, here it looks fairly dark. Um, I may even go over it with like a flesh wash afterwards to kind of tone it down a little bit. But you can see that there is a copper undertone for sure um, because of that hammered copper that we used originally. But I am not going to do anything else when it comes to highlighting the actual the actual scales and skin there. R double down twelve says hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> and then. Geek House Live says, careful not to paint on that monster manual. I'd already done. I was dry brushing and all over my Copper Dragon page. I've got little spills 
little droplets. Brandon, um, Brandon says paper towel is his jam. I don't know. But Brand, is he drinking? <laughs> he must be drinking. On a Sunday? Probably. It's God's day. Yeah. Brandon, come on. Big Puppy Stewart says the wings of copper and gold dragons are so similar in structure that it's super easy to mix the two up. It's true. But then you get double, double work out of them. All right, I am going to, uh, like I said, the sepia tone is still, wash is still drying there, but if we're dry brushing, we're not gonna catch that too much. So this will really bring out the, the belly, what we're about to do uh, on this here. So let's go with, uh, I need to wash this brush a bit because there's a lot of paint in there. Make sure that you wash your brushes, folks. Take good care of your brushes, they'll last longer. You can get like a brush conditioner to wash them with afterwards as well. Um, all right, so we are gonna go back into, the nice thing about Vallejo actually, and I can show you guys here, is that the paint actually stays wet in the palette longer than a lot of the other paints I've used, which I really like, because it just means that you can come back to it later and still use it uh, without it drying up in the palette. And also the dropper bottles, dropper bottles rock. Um, mm. Just because, again, you're using less paint, it goes a longer. Um, Geek House Live says brush soap is awesome. Yes, yeah, exactly, like a conditioner or brush soap. Yep. Mischief Joker says, or asks, how long do you spend painting one mini on average? Um, usually, most minis I'd say two to three hours. Um, all of our episodes will be two hours on this on this show, so we're trying to keep it down to two hours. In in, in if it's a showpiece like that beholder with like all the airbrush kind of lighting effects and all the special effects and stuff, took a lot longer. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean with with dry brushing and, and, and kind of those sorts of techniques, it, it makes it a lot quicker. You folks can see that I am now dry brushing using bone white along the belly and the neck, and that is bringing out the scales on there. Um, what I am finding though is I'm not getting them quite as bright as I'd like to, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the dry brush down. I am gonna go to a number a zero Vallejo Torre brush, uh, and I'm gonna go directly into uh, bone white still. And we're gonna paint, this is a little technique I learned for painting bone uh, kind of texture. Another technique to get a point on a brush uh, is that when you put, when you put, uh, load your brush with paint, you wanna roll it in your fingers like this so you get a, a, a nice, nice point on that like that. What I'm gonna do is you can see that kind of the bones or that the scales have kind of a, a texture that runs along it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint little lines along the texture on the scales. And then I'm going to make kind of the edges and the uh, center kind of spiny area more prominent. So you can see I'm running my brush along the edges here. Um, Darkstrider193 says, would you be able to do a video of touching up the pre-painted miniatures, Hill Giant from Storm King's Thunder Booster in particular? The pre-painted? The pre-painted miniatures. Hmm. Uh, touching them up. I Interesting. think is what they're... Uh, like, like converting them kind of a bit? Like just painting over them? Yeah. I'm I, assuming? I'm assuming there's mold lines. You probably have to like... Do you yeah. still have to pull those out? Yeah. So I, I, I would imagine... Uh, so we'll probably do some, um, some of the... They just released um, giants in Wave Eight, I believe, along with these dragons, um, and so we'll probably do a couple of dragons. So we can we can do those, and then you can take some of those techniques that you learn off of what we're doing, and then apply those to the pre-painted if you want to. Um, that would that would help. And then, what tips can you give on painting eyes of monsters or humanoids? Ha, ha, ha. I get this question every <laughs> class. It's always the always the eyes. Um, for eyes, for me, the way that I do them, and uh, I know a lot of people do them this way, is uh, I'll be doing the eye on this, but literally the eye is so small in this dragon. I mean, it would be on a human as well. 
is I do, um, before I do too much detail on the face, I paint it in uh, white. Then I do a black line right down the center of the eye that creates a pupil. And then I'll go back in with the darkest flesh tone and then close in the eyelids, basically. And then that way, um, you know, you don't, you don't end up with those like anime eyes that you get um, on miniatures that are like huge. These like always surprised, unless you have a character who's always surprised. And then really, I mean, whatever. I'm also using the edge of my brush here. I've rotated the mini around so that I can use the edge of my brush to catch kind of the edges along the skin here like this. You can see that that's just catching just, just the edge. Quick and dirty folks, quick and dirty. Dragons in two hours. How are we doing for time, Joel? It is 5.56. Woo! I think we're doing all right. Yeah. Let's slow it down a little bit. We're gonna have time left over. What are we gonna do, Joel? If if we if we're done before the two hours, we just we just we just tell have jokes. A party. Just have a party. Tell jokes. Yes, we ha invite everyone over, and play a session. Play a session, just right now. <laughs> yeah, in the last. Hey, we we paint the dragon and then we do a, an encounter with a dragon. That's a bad idea. Really? The graph would die. Yeah, you would die. I mean, the graph dies a lot. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, but the graph is Joel's character in our campaign, in our live stream, which you can catch tomorrow at seven thirty, Eastern time. <laughs> Sorry, bad plug. Shameless, shameless plug. I tried to do simple darkened eyes, and my wizard looked like a mall goth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Some people say, "Why bother doing the eyes? Just do dark areas." Meh. That's fine, if that's if that's your jam. So here you can see I'm just running along the, the scales to kind of give them a bit more definition, each one, which is a little painstaking, but in the end makes it look. Darkstrider193 asks, how much are your crates? Postage, oh. question mark? Uh, so for North America, shipping is included. Um, we're still trying to figure out Europe, and we apologize to our European customers because it's taking a lot longer um, than we expected. So we have to revisit all that. But um, but yeah, in in North America, the uh, shipping is free. So uh, I think our crates are um, seventy nine and ninety nine. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. I should know these things. They're sixty nine and ninety nine. Uh, the ninety nine ones come with a Vallejo. Uh, uh, hobby pack that you can that that basically includes everything that you need to paint the um, to paint the miniatures in the box so you, you can check out our crates at www.realmsmith.tv um zenfire asks a question i should have asked before getting my mini printed yes what is the standard for a dnd &D mini 28 or 32 millimeters oh that's a good question um 28 and 32 are so close. Um, I think they both work. Mm. Um, personally, I think standard would be 28. People are going to yell at me in the in the chat if I'm wrong. Um, but I've seen both work. All right. Wow. What? He's he just looks so nice. He's getting there. I mean, he's he's not again. We're Showing some simple techniques here, folks. Simple techniques. All right. So I'm going to continue on the belly. Now that the belly kind of is done and all these scales are sort of painted here, um, we are going to use off-white straight out the bottle. And we're just going to paint it on the highest points on his belly just to bring out, again, add a little bit of water, dilute it just a touch. And then I'm just going to just hit these points right like that. Just hitting the top edge all along the top here just to make them pop a little bit more. Bottom edge just a little bit. Like that. All right. 
speaking of dragons, our party messed up pretty bad mm. in our stream. My dragonborn monk isn't happy. Basically, it was like our job because we were playing um, Horde of the Dragon Queen. And Tiamat showed up and we failed. And she transported us to another plane of existence. And so now we're trying to get back to the Forgotten Realms. That wasn't fun. Let's be honest, though. Like, was there Let's any... be honest, Joel. Uh, was for a there here. any expectation that level 5 characters could <laughs> do anything against Tiamat? That, that is something you should take up with Brandon, <laughs> who is our DM for that stream. Isn't it just our DM's way of actually starting his own homebrew campaign out of where we were? I'm not going to make any assumptions <laughs> as to the uh, as to the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, the the motivation. The motivations the behind Brandon. Um, he is sadistic, and he uh, mm. even though he appears like a nice guy, like you think, oh yeah, he's such a nice guy. No, Brandon's not. No, um, not when it comes to D and D. He likes to to mess with us. <laughs> I know he's watching. So, all right. So I am taking rosy flesh, folks, and I am painting it in the mouth. I am currently painting the roof of the mouth. Very carefully, not to mess up all of that beautiful, like I just did there, all that beautiful work we did on the skin and the scales, in and around there, under the tongue. And this is pretty garish at this point. Again, being really careful, folks. Like that, and then on the bottom of the mouth as well. I keep hitting the camera with my glasses there so that is rosy flesh we lost the camera here oh no just it's, just it's really slow eh? yeah I know it's weird sorry about that folks okay so rosy flesh in the mouth like that and then we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna hit that with a wash as well uh, I don't like that I got it see a little tip is if you wash your brush off and just add some water you can like clean up your mistakes um, with a brush that you don't have any paint on it you just kind of like like an eraser erase those mistakes um, but the wash will and then we'll go in and we'll paint those teeth and give the tongue a wash which will give it some depth there as well all right so now that the scales and the underbelly are done we're going to go ahead and we are going to paint the claws we're gonna use black the vallejo black is a little bit glossy which is nice because the nails kind of pop put some of that in our palette grab our brush load that brush up a little tiny bit of water here we go so he has these little claws on the end of his wings like that Where are you referencing, like, the different colors from, like, are you referencing a photo, an image, an illustration of some kind? Yeah, so when I was kind of planning this out, I actually looked at the Monster's Manual uh, and kind of Googled D&D Copper Dragons. Uh, and then just kind of from there looked at the Vallejo line and uh, and decided kind of what I wanted to do. It's, it's fairly simple. I mean, my technique, um, and th there's painters who are much more sophisticated than I am when it comes to choosing uh, a color scheme but basically I choose a base coat a mid-tone and a highlight and then go from there that's basically are you using what a black, I a black right now I'm using black yeah okay not black wash just black yeah um, and uh, and and then that's pretty much it so you know I was looking at the scales and I'm like okay he's a copper dragon so I should definitely use hammered copper for the base coat and then uh, progressively lighter metallic or gold colors from there. So then, you know, I, go, I moved on to bright bronze. And then I was like, ah, polished gold for kind of a, a final highlight would make sense. Um, if I was doing a gold dragon, I would use glorious gold, which is kind of a more muted, darker gold color for the base coat, and then go up from there. Um, so, yeah, so that's my process. It's, it's really just looking at images and pictures and then looking at the paint line that I have and what I have on hand and then kind of deciding deciding from there. I don't mix a lot of paints. 
I, I never have. I come from kind of the, the um, kind of an old school kind of approach that way, um, or rather table uh, kind of a tabletop board gaming approach. Um, but yeah. And is there a color difference between the younger and the older dragons? Um, not that I've noticed. That's a good question. Um, I mean, for me, ancient and, and, and adult dragons should, in my opinion, uh, you know, be more epic mm -hmm. than the younger dragons. I would probably put more patina on a copper dragon than I would on, on a, like an ancient copper dragon than I would on a young one. Um, sort of that kind of stuff. I would also take more time. Like if I were doing an adult dragon, um, which is like a serious centerpiece and should be like really super impressive on the tabletop, I'd probably take more time and do some like secondary lighting source or or, or just more time blending. I think I'd just take more time on it than anything. Mm -hmm. All right, so claws are black. They are painted black. Just like that. Uh, I think the mouth is dry now. So now that the mouth is dry and all that rosy flesh in there is dry, I'm going to take the sepia wash that we used earlier. Um, add a bit more to my palette, and I'm going to use that in the mouth. And that'll give it all some depth in there. That'll also kind of fix some of the issues I had with the teeth and the overbrushing area. But you can see right away, right on that tongue, it gives it a... It gives it a little divot in the middle of it. So the washes kind of pool into the deeper recesses. Yeah, so washes are used for adding shadow. It's basically a depth yeah. and contrast. Inks are kind of used for tinting an area. Um, but yeah, washes are used for, for that. I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to paint his teeth. So while we're waiting for that, I am going to use my z uh, 040 brush, which is a really fine, fine detail brush and we're going to do eyes. This should be fun. Uh, I'm going to go put some livery green or livery. I don't know what it is, but livery. I'm going to call it livery. Yep. Um, and basically you're just going to get a little bit of paint. Now when you're painting really small areas like eyes and stuff, you want to make sure that it flows. Um, so you want to water it down so that it actually, so you're not jabbing at it trying to get paint in there. But at the same time, you don't want to make it too watery because you don't want it to pool. So basically, uh, another tip that I use when painting, my hands are a disaster right now from dry brushing, um, but you want to rest either your fingers or your hand. So basically I'm holding it with this hand and I'm resting my hand on my other hand and resting my finger on his face so that I can have a nice solid base to dot these eyes. So let's see how this goes here. Wow, he just came alive. It went okay. He's got a green eye. That's all I wanted. That's all I want in life is just for my copper dragon to have a nice green eye. And and angles matter too. Like I I move my minis in all kinds of different angles to try and get them the way that they, you know, to uh, get into certain nooks and crannies uh, Future Trouble asks do you use any media matte, glaze, etc when blending or layering um, no I don't um, I do use them for bringing out kind of gloss textures so um, on the beholder for example while this is drying I'll bring out the beholder um, I use gloss for the eyeballs so I put a gloss varnish on the eyes so that they look wet and and also on the gums you can see that there's they're much more glossy than the rest of them. So I'll use a gloss varnish for that. Um, sometimes I'll use a matte varnish um, if a paint surface is a bit too glossy and I want to kind of bring it down, but not really in mixing, actually. Uh, I find water does just fine with acrylic-based paints. Um, all right, so he is almost done, if not pretty much done. Uh, how are we doing for time? Did we, it like, is 6.10. We have a lot more time left. Yeah. A lot wow, of that's time. great. I, this is the simplest of the dragons. I started them. I started it first because there is the least amount of work. Um, we are going to go and do some vertigris soon, which is kind of the fun part. Um, and I also, because we have time, I might use like a um, flesh wash to add some more kind of darker 
contrast in there. That's nice. We're done early, so we can we can actually do some fun things here as well. Are you <laughs> sorry? Brandon just said paint the graph. Anyway, yes. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> no. That'll um, never happen. No, not gonna happen. Um, Big Puppy Stewart says, "Okay, now paint the full size model." Yeah, yeah, he's just behind the curtain. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is, or someone said, someone said, what did they say? The dragon's all over the place from the size. Um, I'm not sure that's what they meant. And, like, the size of the dragon is weird and all over the place, but whatever. Um, looking for the questions I missed. Oh, are you painting the base? Yes, yes, we will base it. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, that's pretty simple, but yeah, we will absolutely be doing that. All right, so I don't know how this is going to go, folks. I'm adding vertigris here. We are going to see how it goes. This is the first time I've used this effect. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm just painting it along the edges. Uh, if you look at the um, monster manual, he's got some kind of along the edges, just like it would kind of settle into the recesses on a kind of a copper statue. Um, oh. I I'm just going to kind of like bring it along the edges and kind of brush it into the recesses. And then hopefully when it dries, it'll kind of look like like it's patinaed. It actually already does kind of look. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the idea. Amazing. That's kind of the idea here. That's kind of the idea. And of course, this effect paint, is, it isn't regular paint. It is an effect. So it should dry a little bit differently than the regular paints will, but I'm just doing this all along kind of the edge of the wings. <laughs> Zenfear says, uh, full-size dragon would be so epic, marathon stream, 24 hours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've put my I've put my request into WizKids for full-size dragon, so. Yeah. Um, Geek House Live says, do you have a character mini so you can show the size differential between oh, the dragon yes. and the character mini? Yes. That's a cool idea. Yes, I will give you a dwarf here. So this is the copper dragon, and this is a dwarf. So that is a young copper dragon, which is pretty good for a young size, I'd say. All right, so I'm going to do the other side. just going to do all the wing sides here. Here we go. I'm just kind of wisping it along, kind of get, trying to get it into the recesses so there is some you definitely want it settling. And you can see even on this side, now that it's already starting to dry, how it's kind of adding a bit of a, a patina on that side. And I am watering this down, folks. I am watering the vertigris down because uh, that way it won't be, a, it'll be less opaque when it dries. You'll still get the copper on that side. And it'll dry darker then it's going on. So that, that looks really, you can see how that looks really bright and kind of silly. Um, but as soon as I, um, but the other, if, if you look at the other side, it's already starting to dry and be a lot more subtle. Like this. This is the fun thing about copper is you can, you can kind of add a bit more character. Uh, what are some other minis, types of minis, characters, monsters that you guys would like us to see us paint that you've seen in the WizKids line? That's a that's a question I'd love an answer to. Mm -hmm. What else do you guys want to see us paint after we do dragons? What kind of other things would you guys like to see us do? do want to do one of the the uh, giants that's something I'd like to and I am finding that uh, going from the end of the wing down is providing a better effect than and striking out than striking up because it's it's tapering the edges a bit more so it's mm. blending it a bit more into the into the rest uh, big puppy Stewart says a flesh golem would be fun flesh golem okay cool <clears throat> if they have it I think they do WizKids is not messing around, man. They have... Yeah, they're doing great. Tons of really great minis. 
and so affordable too. All right, so I've done, I think I have one more side of the wing to do. Yeah, that side there. So I've done that side, you can just can see, even on the back of there, how that looks. I'm looking really cool, looking pretty cool. So I am gonna do this side. This is actually really adding character to the, to the mini. I'm glad we did this. Uh, Big Puppy Stewart says, rotting flesh and putrescence is a challenge, and any pointers would be appreciated. Rotting flesh. Um, yeah. So, again, with rotting flesh for me, uh, especially on zombies and stuff, um, you want to go pale. Uh, and you got to remember, too, that rotting flesh, typically by the time it's a zombie, there isn't a lot of blood left. And so if you're doing blood, you want to do, like, dry blood. Um Vallejo has like dry blood effects that I use um, and a lot of the, the paint lines out there have them as well uh, but they work really well and so I spatter like dry blood all over them um, and you want to I mean again to each their own but for me pale zombies make a lot of sense and so I always try and keep uh, the skin fairly pale um, and uh, and one really great thing to do actually it's a really good point. Uh, for quick zombie kind of techniques, uh, you can do this with skeletons as well as you grab white or, or even like a, a, a WizKids mini that's already gr primed gray and then you just use a wash. And if you use a, a, like, a, like a flesh wash over something that's gray primed um, and you thin it a bit so it doesn't go on too thick, you actually get a really cool pale version of that, of that wash color. It's really, really great. Insider tip. All right, so we did the wings. I actually really like how that turned out and how it's drying. You can see how it kind of dried on that side. Very cool. So I am actually going to do a little bit where the wing meets kind of where vertigris would kind of typically pool. So we're going to do a little bit where the wing meets the body. Um, the one in the, in, the, in the monster's manual has quite a bit of it um, along its body so we're gonna put a little bit in here now I'm not gonna outline the whole thing because that'd be just too much for me I think um, but just kind of in the major areas I'm gonna do it on the back here as well where the wings kind of meet the I'm watering this down quite a bit so that uh, it just pulls in certain areas and doesn't look too uniform but just along in here Dark Strider 193 says Shambling Mound, Griffin, Tree Men. Oh, Shambling Mound. That is a great idea. WizKids released recently a, a really great Shambling Mound. That is a great idea. We are definitely going to do a Shambling Mound. In fact, the crates we just shipped today have a Shambling Mound in the... Nice. Spoiler alert for those playing. Sorry, DMs. <laughs> but yeah, look at that. So into the recesses, it looks really cool. I didn't expect to put this much vertigris. Vertigris, vertigris. I don't know what it. How do you pronounce it? How do you pronounce it, Joel? You're French. I say vertigris, but that's just me. Vertigris. Vertigris. Sorry, we're Canadian. <laughs> Forgive us. Cool. Look at that. I like that we have extra time because now I'm just playing. I am going to add some. I've decided that I am going to add some along the inside of the wing as well here where the wing meets the... Yeah. I'm just kind of going nuts with this. It looks super cool. Yeah, I think it's coming along, right? I think it's all right. Just following the inside kind of contours of the wing here. Yeah, and this, I mean, this vertigris effect or vertigree effect will definitely separate this from other metallic dragons. Um, you know, because again, it's hard to kind of get the, the gold and copper dragons looking different. And this is definitely a way to do it. 
it seems like it really highlights the bone structure of the of the wings. It just yeah. looks awesome. Yeah, because you you definitely get like a lot of, um, it kind of all blends in together when it's all the same color. Mm-hmm. So this just gives it gives it some. I'm gonna put a little bit in between kind of the deeper recesses of the horns here. And then in the crooks, or the nooks and crannies of the arms too. I'm gonna add some of that in the back of the leg. Again, I'm not going too nuts with it. I'm not putting it everywhere. Of course, to each their own, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. But I just feel like I just want it to be kind of somewhat sparingly, just to give it some depth, like that. Look at that. Look at that, folks. What are we, an hour and a half in, and we already have a... 621. Yep. Pretty good copper dragon already. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, I may even go in with a bit more later, because as it dries, you can see how kind of it tends to... Look at that wing. That, That worked pretty good. This this effect is great. This stuff is awesome. While I've been handling it, though, I have noticed that I've kind of taken off some of the black on the on the claws. And because you folks will be handling these a lot, I do definitely suggest um, either like a spray lacquer varnish, um, which Vallejo actually just released a really great one, really great one. It shipped in January. Um, or um, or just like their spray-on varnish works as well. Oh, I didn't do the teeth yet. Let's do oh, the yeah. teeth. All right, for the teeth, I am going to use bone white, and I'm just going to pick out the teeth, and then we will go on to the base, which is super easy and should be pretty quick. Bone white. Bone white here, and basically what I'm going to do... is I am going to just pick out with the edge of my brush because I don't want to hit anything else I'm just picking up the top of the teeth see I'm just kind of dabbing because I don't want to get it anywhere else other than just the tips of the teeth because the teeth are very small you just want to catch the edge of them like that and then the top as well teeth on the top are a bit bigger so you can go a bit harder on it but There. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to say this is almost done. I do like the very great kind of like in between the scales there. I'm going to do that a bit more of that actually. Dark Strider 193 says if you finish it with time to spare, start going through the monster manual and talk about the monsters. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, right here, why not? Uh, DM perspective and player. Um, yeah, interesting. How long will it take to take to do the base? Oh gosh, ten minutes. Okay, or so. Was that a question or was that from you? That's from me. Okay, which is a question, but just from me. I meant like an important one. Or... <laughs> no, not important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Joel's very important. Now for these eyes, I typically like go green, so I did the little green, and then I do like a little dot of yellow in there, believe it or not, and then maybe I'd use like a green wash to kind of give it a bit of a glow. Um, and if we, ha- if I knew we'd have more time, then I would have done that. All right, so I'm going to put him down. He's just going to kind of hang out right here for a bit while we do his base. Look at that, folks! Hour and a half, copper dragon in an hour and a half. All right. Uh, the bases are really cool. You've got this uh, clear um, effect. And then you also have a black base that you can put it on as well. You can mount it. Um, just some crazy glue on there, and you can get that on fairly easily. But we are not going to do that because we want to be able to handle it. Um, but what we are going to do is we are going to start with heavy blue-gray. I'm going to mix that up. Put some on our palette. Now, 
The extra opaque paints from Vallejo are like heavy paints in other paint lines. They go on in like one coat. They're really, really good for that. Uh, you get really great coverage. Um, and you want to put it on fairly thick. Um, let's see here. Geek House Live suggested a good thing for extra time, if we have any, is to go over the Copper Dragon in the player's handbook and maybe even give some adventure mm. ideas on how to use the beastie in a campaign. That's a good idea. It's a great idea. We should do that. Yep. We should actually prepare that stuff like ahead of time for yeah, these. That's a good that's, idea. That's we can talk about. I know for me, I think there was a Copper Dragon in uh, Sentinels that you guys met, and so... Thanks, WizKids, for not releasing it sooner. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I'm, I'm kidding, Justin. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we... Um, uh, Copper Dragons. I mean, one thing that, that I find, um, and actually Sentinels... Uh, uh, so not Sentinels, Storm King's Thunder. I said Sentinels, I meant Storm King's Thunder. Storm King's Thunder does... What Storm King's Do Thunder does really well. I'm using Heavy Blue Gray, by the way. Um... What Storm King Thunder does really well is it manages to fit in higher level creatures into a low level campaign. Um, because, I mean, people are playing Dungeons and Dragons and they like to see a dragon at some point. And sometimes people don't play through a whole campaign or they start new characters and you never get there. So, f in my opinion, you know, I like to kind of find creative ways to put dragons into a campaign earlier than they typically would appear. Somehow. So, again, with, with um, metallic dragons, it's easier to do that because they can help you along your quest. Um, you know, in Storm King's Thunder, they had a silver dragon kind of show up while they're in the airship and, and, and kind of um, help them along or guide them along their way on their adventure. Um, that sort of stuff. So, metallic dragons, actually, you can put in fairly easily and fairly regularly into a, into a low, lower level campaign. Obviously, chromatic dragon, dragons are a little bit more difficult. Um, what I always like to do is I always like to put a chromatic dragon in human form early in a campaign and have it like walk around and like um, and then show up later and be like ah big reveal it was always a dragon I've always wanted to okay I hope my players aren't listening but I've always wanted to put yeah cover your ears Joel I've always wanted to put like a, a human um, a, a, a metallic or copper dragon probably a metallic dragon who has um, polymorphed into a human and then be an NPC through the entire campaign and then all of a sudden like level like 10 it turns into a dragon always wanted to do that and I might still big puppy cover your ears big puppy Stewart says what's your favorite metallic dragon based on personality they're they're testing me today um Oh, man. That's tough. And just to let you know, Brandon responded, blue dragons are great to build up as a big baddie because of their manipulative nature. Yeah, he knows that firsthand. Yeah, he does. Imrith from <laughs> Storm King Center's Boiler Wings. Uh, George15000 asks, Hello, which color is the edge of the dragon's wings? What color? Yeah. So um, if you're just tuning in, I've used Vertigris, which is a Vallejo game effect. Um, and basically just painted it in streaks along the side and it's settled into the recesses and it gives the, the, the dragon a nice patina so that it looks like it's made of copper. And so I've also done that. I've run it along the inside where the seams meet and it actually turned out pretty okay, I think. I'm just waiting for this base coat to dry. On the base. So right now we're just doing the base. I'm using heavy blue-gray, making sure to jab it into all the... And then we're just going to use a black wash over it. And that's typically enough. Bases, for me, I don't spend a lot of time on them because I don't want to detract from the mini itself. Um, and so we're just allowing that to dry there. So you would suggest don't make the base too crazy? Yeah, I mean, to each their own, right? right. But, but I would rather spend time, more time on the mini than on the base. Just because, you know, you want, you want, the, you want the base to be the, the thing that, or the, the mini the thing that steals the show, right? Um, rather than the base. I would go in, if I had it, with a flesh wash at this point, like a reddish color even, like a red wash. Uh, not an ink because it's a bit too opaque, but I would, I would come in and add some more of that flesh wash into some of the recesses to really bring that copper out, especially in the arms and the shoulder here. Uh, the dry brushing kind of went a little heavy-handed, um, 
but you can see like the copper color right in there is really nice. Um, but on some of these areas, it's looking a little gold. But again, the patina from the vertigris really helps to kind of bring that down. And then what I'll do is I'll rattle can spray varnish this. On mini, sometimes I'll just brush uh, uh, like, a, like a matte varnish over it. Uh, for this, I'll use a gloss except for the belly, which I'll use a matte varnish on. Um, come on, base. Again, let's all blow together. This is the worst thing to do on camera. Dark Strider uh, 193 responded to Zen Fear and says, one of my players is a half dragon and doesn't know it. What? <laughs> they do now if they're watching <laughs> Noel's just marvelous tutorials with Ralph Smith, which they should be. They really should be. But if you're not, then then what else are you doing on a Sunday? Yeah. Family dinners, right? Yeah. How does that work? A half dragon doesn't know it. Oh, kind of like Loki. Spoiler warnings <laughs> for those of you that want to watch Thor like five years ago. Crazy. All right. Well, while I'm waiting for that base to dry, um, next week we'll be doing uh, Blue Dragon. And then we'll talk about next week about what if we'll do the black or the green the following week. Uh, we've got three more dragons to do, and that'll cover us for May. Uh, and then um, Mondays, so tomorrow at 7.30, we play our uh, live stream game, uh, Order of Dragons Bane. Uh, so you can catch us on YouTube and Twitch at twitch.tv slash realmsmith or youtube.com slash realmsmith. Is it realmsmith or realmsmith TV? Uh, on where? Oh, uh, Twitch. Uh, uh, realmsmith. Realm Smith. Yes. On, okay. Yeah. So slash realmsmith on both of those. Uh, make sure that you follow us on uh, not only the D&D &D Twitch, of course, and we thank them for hosting us today, but also on our Twitch channel at slash realmsmith. For sure. And Geek House Live says, Hey everyone, remember if you're enjoying this stream, to share it on your Facebook pages or host it on your Twitch channels, let your friends know about it. We didn't even pay him. No. Her. We Her. don't know we who it is. No, who it but, is. But they just love us. Thank you. Uh, and I love them. Thank you. Um, so definitely tune into that. Again, if you want to check out our adventure crates, you can do that at www.realmsmith.tv. Um, and Origins. Make sure that you folks head out to Origins. If you're at Origins, please stop by and say hi. Please join our events. Um, we want to absolutely make sure that we get the chance to walk you through and paint with you. So don't. I mean, it's, it's amazing. These events sell out really, really quick. At PAX Unplugged, they were sold out before like 7 a.m. or something stupid like that. Like people were in line, so they've tripled the size apparently uh, this year. So it's going to be really great at PAX uh, as well. But um, but yeah, Origins, make sure that you guys check that out. Uh, 12th to 16th? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, June 12th to 16th, we will be painting lots of minis at Origins with folks like you. Um, I'm painting the black on the end of these now because... They rubbed off from all the handling. I should have done them last. Typically do. All right. Okay. So base is maybe good to go. We are going to try this, folks. Is it still tacky? Oh, it's still tacky. So tacky. Is it because of the thick the paint is thicker? Um, Vallejo paint takes some time to dry and cure, which I like because it allows you to blend. And 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 again, like if I were to go in here, I could actually poke a hole in some of these, and this co these colors are still good to go. Like I can still use them, which is really nice. I don't even use a wet palette today. Um, but yeah, it just takes time. Paint just takes time to dry. We're in a we're in a studio. It's like watching basement, paint so dry. It's like. <laughs> like watching paint dry. <laughs> Sorry. So I just got to get better, uh, or not better, but you, you know, while doing these, you got to kind of figure out, okay, if I paint this area, it's going to dry while this other area is, is whatever. So and we only have a certain amount of time that we have in order to paint these. Um, and so there it goes. I'm totally going to put a copper dragon in my campaign because I have a really cool one here now. <laughs> Big Puppy Stewart says, hey, I'm off. See y'all later, and don't trust a DM when they say you don't see anything. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> big pup. And Geek House Live, by the way, who said, "Hey, everyone, remember," yeah. is Rick. It's Richard Angby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Rick. Uh, thanks, Rick. Um, this is the black one. Check that out. So cool. That'll be in probably two or three weeks. He's so evil looking. Look at that face. It's a face only a mom could love. 
Again, if you want to see all the tutorials that we've done, um, the Albert and um, Beholder tutorials are on our YouTube page, uh, www.youtube.com slash realmsmith. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and hit the little bell icon, and we have lots of stuff that we post there on a fairly regular basis. So definitely check that out. Okay, I'm going to try and wash this thing because people are tired of me shameless plugging and advertising. Okay, here we go. All right. How's everyone doing out there? Is, is there is everyone going kind of quiet? They're, they're enjoying On a it. Sunday afternoon. For us, it's a Sunday evening. Yep. For us here in Can in Toronto. I've, I've, Where's everybody from, actually? It's a great question. I'd love to know. Totally. Where people are hailing from. That would be great. Where are they from? But I've also added a suggestion box plug-in to, to our Twitch page. What? So it's basically just like a little suggestion box at the bottom what? of our video stream. Yeah. And people can say, I want to see this on your stream. Really? Yeah. That's super cool. So, uh, so yeah. If you That's feel a so great fun. idea. Well, Joel, it's almost like you meant to do this. <laughs> um, f uh, future Trouble is from Kingston and Jamaica. What? <laughs> I know. I love Jamaica. Oh. Belgium. Zenfir is from Belgium. Nice. Welcome. Geek House Live is from Bel Air, Maryland. Yeah, we know that. Um, so how would you now use this Copper Dragon in a campaign, says Geek House Live. Yeah. Um, very carefully. Uh, now that I know it's Rick. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I uh, so I've, I've black washed that and it is still wet. So it's just mixing. So I'm just gonna have to wait a little bit longer, folks. See, this is what happens when you do stuff live. You just you kind of do what you do and then you figure it out. And then I'm just gonna put that down and let that let that dry um, for a little while. George fifteen thousand is yeah. from Rhodes, Greece. What? Yeah. All over the world, eh? What Be time is it in Greece? Becca Panther twenty seven is from the UK. Enjoying the stream, looking forward to starting to paint my own miniatures. So she must be new at it. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, Dark Striders from Australia. What time is it in these places? It's got to be. What time is it in Australia right now? I don't. I don't. Know. Well, hey Siri, I'm just kidding. I have no. Oh, what time is it in Australia right now? Eight thirty eight a.m. Eight thirty a.m. Breakfast in, with Realmsmith in Canberra on the, on the D and D <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Breakfast, breakfast painting with Realmsmith. It's awesome. Oh, I just got a text from Rudy Rutenberg who said, "Congrats on the show. Thanks, buddy." Aw, all the love. That's all amazing. All the love. Mm. Hey, Rude Smooth. Dilla, Dilla Gaffern is. I think that's right. Dill Ligafern. I'm not sure. San Francisco. Yeah. D Love San Fran. C. Lasser is yeah. from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm, like get, I'm getting all of these wrong. Wow. That's, that's, that's close. Um, Ken is Hyper far. is yeah. watching from North York, Toronto. What? Yeah. Ken. Yeah. Buddy. Just hang out. Neighbors. Just come over. Just don't watch online. Just come join us. Just come sit. Um, Limelo is from the T-Dot as know. well. That, that's Tim. Yeah. That's our operations manager. I know. Just makes it. That's great. France. Romain. What? 83. All over the world. From France. I'm a little upset about this base because I jumped the gun a bit. I should have painted the base first. Ah, see, next time we paint bases first. That's what we do. Next time we paint bases first. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That is, that's the key. <laughs> People are going to tune in yeah. at the beginning of the show, and yeah. they're going to see it's a, it's a, he's painting a chunk of dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. This is Dirt 101. Painting Dirt 101. I'm just going to do this, because when people, like, join in, they look so that it's not like this, and I'm just not, like, sitting here. Like, yeah. what kind of stream is this? <laughs> what kind of stream is this? Wow. Um, I, so, I, I have a question for the audience. Yes, do it. Okay. Yes. Um, if you were rolling a d20, if Jay had rolled a d20 mm. and the intent was to teach others how to paint a copper dragon, what would his role have been? Look. Like, did he did he roll a 20 on this one? Is it a 17? Did he roll an 8 successfully teaching others to paint a dragon? Did he roll a... <laughs> you know I'm not I mean? quite sure what you're getting at, sir. I'm, 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 
I'm wondering what people think. You are clearly trying to kill time. <laughs> I mean, you were, you were clearly, on, this is on clearly a, on a D20. How did you do? Oh, oh, I see. So people aren't rolling the D20. No, They're no. saying I, on a scale of one to twenty. Exactly. How did? Well, I mean, we ended an hour, a half hour early. That's true. That's p- pretty good. <laughs> Actually, you know what? This little look at this. Sometimes mistakes happen. Look at the like the the kind of <laughs> cool. Pattern that's uh, by the way, this. Romain 83, which is yeah. Romain oh, 83, me. says, Thank God for Canadians who can pronounce French words. See? Si. Ah, si, merci! Uh, so we got you. We got you. <laughs> we got you. All right, so Blue Dragon next time. Uh, did we, we have the Blue Dragon upstairs, but um, we could show it off. <laughs> I can't believe we're done so early. Um, we we need to figure out how to work something on the side. No, this is great with, so the, that, with the audience. Yeah, okay, I so know, but it's Geek a House L- show. Yes, and now I'm right. just talking. You're right. Welcome to our first episode. Um, Geek House Live says, I would say he rolled a 14, but with his artistic modifier of 7, he gets a 21. So pretty badass. <laughs> See? <laughs> so kind. I love Rick. Yeah. Rick, man. <laughs> so kind. My buddy. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really good suggestion to go to the Monsters Manual, check out the Copper Dragon, and like yeah. talk, talk about the stats. Maybe, yeah, sure, you know. let's do that. Let's do. It. You know what was weird earlier when I was setting up my little station here? I opened up the Monster Manual right to the Copper Dragon. Hmm. Like no bookmark. Now it's a mind flare. No bookmark. No anything. Honestly, I opened it up and just happened to be on a Copper Dragon. That's very strange. I'll tell you. This, this is now story time with Realmsmith. <laughs> That's okay. You just painted you see, you a copper all the dragon. paint, the, the great little paint. It look, kind of looks like it's part of the... Oh, yeah, you're right. The, yeah. Young copper dragon. Acid breath. <sighs> That's dangerous. Dangerous. Slowing breath. The dragon exhales gas in a 30-foot cone. Each creature in that area must succeed on a DC-14 constitution saving throw. These things are bad arse. Challenge yeah. 7. That's actually much lower than I expected. Young? Because it's young? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I knew that. Look at that. Copper Dragon. Huh. You don't say. Um. It is kind of cool. You're opening the tome from which the dragon you're painting is from. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's just fun. Um, it doesn't have legendary actions as a, as a young which is interesting. Uh, doesn't have any. Does it have layer actions? <laughs> Zenfir says, "Do you have any mini breath for this dragon? <laughs> How would you paint an effect for a dragon like this?" Yeah, that's. I would um, drill a hole through it and then get like dry ice huh. to to like a like a like a vape, <laughs> like a vape, and then have it like get a vape. Yeah, I know. I know. Turn it into a vape. I know. Oh, uh, Stefan Bacorny from. Uh, Dwarven Forge was passing around a, a Kickstarter for like a mini a mini smoke machine. Like it's a little battery sized smoke machine, like a D cell that you put in your terrain and it makes it like how cool is that? That is pretty cool. How cool is that? Do you guys have any suggestions as to how we can make this copper dragon even better after finishing it way super early? Geek House Live says I would call it Galver Trex. Um, Galver Trex. Galver Trex. Wow. Yeah. Rick's good at that stuff. Dark- you know, Sorry, so we're going to call it Galvatrex. Yeah, Galvatrex is, is the name. It is definitely killer. Um, Darkstrider193 says, do they rust? Lol. Oh. That's what the verdigris is. That, that is. They definitely tarnish. It's a, yeah. Um, it's an oxidation. Yeah, absolutely. This is great. Right on. The dragon in the book... Looks more red than copper. That could actually be because of our lighting. It could be because of the lighting. Yeah. It is reddish. It is copper kind of is reddish. You look right. at a penny; it's pretty red. You're right. Which is which is again why I would. You know what, Joel? Can you actually, run into if you if you held that up, Jay? Again, bring it up close, like you did, and see your your dragon back here. Yeah. Like, l- look how close. Yeah, you that are. vertigris kind of color. Yeah, totally. Magic of Vallejo. Can you run into my studio there and grab um, my flesh wash? It's on the left with all the washes. Okay. Grab the flesh wash and the red wash, please. Because we have uh, 15 minutes left, 
and I'm going to bring a little bit more red into this. And this is what happens, right? We kind of, as you're painting, you have an idea of the paints, you pull the paints. I didn't paint a sample one first to find out how it was going to go. I was just kind of figuring out as I went. So um, at this point, I'm thinking, hey, it's looking pretty gold. I'd love for it to be a little bit more kind of on the reddish side. So let's bring some of that back in um, and see if we can do that. A red. red. Yeah, and a red wash. And I'm going to try and, um, yeah. Joel just died, I think. I think Joel, Joel just died in the back. He just tripped over a dragon in the back. All right, so we have flesh wash and red wash. We do not have a little thing because this is, now we're just, no, wing now it. we're just spitballing. Winging it. We're just the dragon. winging it. All right, here we go. Boom. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so this flesh wash is pretty red, so we're gonna just test it here and just put it, yeah. Um, nope, don't like that. Way too brown. Not, not liking that. So we're gonna go red instead. <laughs> we're just gonna see, this could be bad. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna. Great job, Joel and Jason from Geek House Live. Oh, flesh and red might be the ticket. Um, Dark Strider 193 said you could make the belly brighter. Mm -hmm. um, Geek House Live said it would appear that Jason just rolled advantage on this, <laughs> given that you started with the paint you hated. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, this won't work. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. And the problem is, is now I'm using washes and now it's kind of flowing into my vertigris effect mm. and that's not great either so i'm just going to do it in the areas that aren't but yeah that that's bringing it some more red out if i'm if i'm painting yeah that's good kind of like that kind of like that we're just going to go around or we're just going to add it into some of the nooks and crannies here in the areas we didn't put the vertigris vertigris sorry to the french people watching <laughs> that's this that's terrible pretty bad. No, it was good. It was good. I probably should have used an ink, actually. The, Zamfir instead. says the copper is pretty red, probably to have it different from the brass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Because they could be, you're, he's right, they could be very similar. Yeah. Just adding a little bit of this red, red wash in here, just to kind of, oh, that's working, actually. Look at that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's making it kind of, I'm just doing it kind of in the open areas. Trying to stay away from the verdigris. Is that better? Yeah, okay. way better. Thank you. Thanks. I still, still apologize to our French viewers. <laughs> By the way, a whole bunch of people said you rolled a 20 on this puppy. Oh, thanks, yeah. guys. Uh, so. Oh, man. Checks in the mail. Yep. All right. Okay. We're getting there, folks. Are we wrapping up soon? What's the what time? Six forty-eight is the current 648. time. Six forty-eight. All right. Well, it's interesting. You know, as you go, you figure out kind of timing and yeah. what works and what doesn't, and we'll definitely come up with more time killing tactics yeah. for next time, just in case. Mind you, this was just a really easy one. Uh, we wanted to start with a kind of a simpler color scheme to start, but you guys can see, like again, in an hour and a half. We were able to bang out a, a really pretty cool copper dragon. Super cool. Yeah, that red wash is definitely bringing out that copper a bit more. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Oh, it's pulling way too much in there. We should do a giveaway of these at some point. We should. That's we should talk to WizKids and get some giveaways. That is a great idea. That is a really good idea. Yeah, we'll do that next week for sure. Yeah, let's. A I mean, let's ask. Would Would you guys like a giveaway next week? That's a great idea. And what would we give away? The completed dragons? Oh, God. Well, no? Well, maybe. I mean... They're works maybe, of art. Maybe, but but then then you guys can't face them in our campaign. 
<laughs> exactly. We need to give them away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 No, metallics we can keep because they're good. All the all the bad ones <laughs> right. that that spell certain death yes. for you guys can 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 stay. Right? Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna be a good painter and I'm gonna wash my brushes because that would be. Is there a technique to this? Like, do do. Uh, there is soap. There, there, I have soap. Okay. That I that I'll wash them with afterwards. Just gotta make sure that after you use a color that you wash it out because it will dry in the brush and then that's not good. Then that you, is not good at all. Can you talk a little bit about? The uh, the brushes? Yes. Um, these are Vallejo synthetic brushes. Um, they are very decent, very good. Um, they also have the sables, which I want to try. I have a set that I haven't, but these are kind of my everyday brushes. I use them all the time, and they are pretty awesome. Uh, they do come in sets of three. You can get like a, like a miniature set for, pa uh, set for painting miniatures um, that they sell, which is pretty awesome as well. Uh, that's all I know. I don't know a lot about brushes, clearly. Yeah, no uh, the only thing I would say uh, that I'm not good at, but I've been told to do and I'm doing more, is to make sure that when you're filling your brush with paint that you don't fill it to the, f I think it's called a ferrule, um, right to the bottom because it gets gunked. You should only like have paint up to halfway or so um, because then you, you'll um, extend the life of your brushes by doing that. That is a little tip from the pro, paint, from the pro painters out there. Um, Limelo says, the beholder in the background. <laughs> yes. Right? Isn't he cool? Yeah. We also have a dragon on the floor over there that we will be at some point mounting on the wall for sure. Those WizKids dragons are pretty awesome. All right. Let's wrap her up. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. That is a wrap for episode one of D&D's Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. We will be doing this every week, like I said, 5 to 7 Eastern Time, 2 to 4 Pacific. Um, we will absolutely be painting, painting the rest of the Young Dragons one a week for the next three weeks. So this week was the Copper Dragon. We'll give you one last look at it. Ah! We'll p post pictures of it as well uh, on our social media. Uh, you guys can share it out. Uh, we did that in less than like an hour and a half. Um, so like I said, even if you haven't, if you're a little daunted by uh, the idea of... Um, of starting to paint, it's pretty easy, and everybody can do it, and you can do it fairly quickly. Um, I did nothing that was super complex here. We will be posting this afterwards, so once you get your paint, so once you get your minis, if you don't yet, you can watch it back again. It will be on our Twitch. It will also be on our YouTube uh, at slash Realmsmith. Um, you can catch us on all of the socials at slash Realmsmith or slash Realmsmith TV. On Facebook, we're slash Realmsmith TV. Uh, on Instagram, we're slash Realmsmith. It's on the screen right now. TV as well. Um, you can catch us live playing D&D 5e tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is our Horde of the Dragon Queen campaign uh, molding into, morphing into homebrew. And the following week, we do Sentinels of the Storm, which is our Storm King's Thunder campaign, and we alternate those um, every other week. So enjoy that. Make sure that you check out Origins. Uh, we have events there that you guys can join us for. We do master classes with guest uh, celebrity uh, painters. So you guys can definitely uh, catch us there as well. Uh, we have a, a real fun, awesome time doing that. It's a blast. Um, they're like two-hour sessions, and we paint large minis. They're all very large minis, uh, which you'll be able to see in the uh, event description um, on the Origins website. We'll be at a lot of shows moving forward. Uh, we're planning a whole fun year, busy year of shows, because uh, we want to hang out with you guys and see you guys out there in the wild. Um, we'll see you next Sunday here at 5 p.m. Eastern to Pacific. Is there anything else? Check out our crates www.realmsmith.tv we have adventure crates basically we like to show people what to do and we thought what better way to do that than to send you a crate to your home um, each and every month and it's an ongoing campaign so when you order it you get our first shattered shield uh, encounter crate and that carries through an adventure month to month um, and we're doing a promo right now that if you uh, subscribe and maintain an active subscription you'll get a Norse Foundry alloy dice in each crate and then you get a realm smith hex chest which i had here but i don't right now um oh dear don't throw it um you get a realm smith hex chest for your alloy dice in the eighth month um just as a thank you that is totally a bonus um for for subscribing 
Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful week. We will see you tomorrow night, and then we will see you next Sunday here. Same time, same channel. Thank you, D&D, for hosting. We have one in the can, buddy. One in the can. Love it. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.